How's it going guys? My name's Honcho and welcome to another squad video. In today's video, we're going to quickly go over how to use the command assets for both regular and irregular factions and how to use the assets without relying on any other squad lead to put requests in for you. But first, I just want to point out that over 96% of my views have come from people who aren't subscribed to the channel yet. So do me and yourself a big favor, click that subscribe button, hit the bell icon. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it helps me out a great deal. It may not sound like much, but to be able to call in assets on your own from the tools you are given makes the whole situation a lot easier for everyone on your team. We'll take a look at regular forces first and then go on to irregular forces later on in the video. Obviously, the first thing you need to know is you need to be by a friendly hub that is currently active. You can either hide inside it or in cover nearby. Now to call a UAV once the timer is ready, you press your caps lock key. This brings up the whole map and in the top left you will see support actions. Click on the UAV and then left click on the part of the map where you want to deploy it. Drag your mouse to change the size of the radius and click again to deploy it. If you aren't happy with the placement, make sure to right click to cancel it first so you can replace it elsewhere. Once the UAV has made it onto the field, click on the UAV icon under the support tab to start using it. Now one trick I highly suggest you use here is to bind a key or a button for observe, which will be found within the key bindings. But there is a default which is U, that places a defence mark but it achieves the same goal. You will be using this to mark enemy units on the map more accurately and it also helps you get an idea of where you are on the map. Now let's say you want to call in an airstrike on an enemy radio or a disabled tank. What you want to do is place an observe mark directly on your target and then mark it on the map with the correct icon. Then you want to move your cursor about 20 feet to the side and mark that point on the floor with something more distinguishable. Something that's not used much like a motorbike or an AT marker. What this does is gives you an easy way to line up your airstrikes as you put your first part of the arrow on the mark to the side of the target and then put the arrow onto and through your target. You can press Z or Z to get the UAV to stay fixed on what you are currently looking at too, so long as it is within the radius, but this may make things a little easier to mark and line up. This can also be used to lock onto moving vehicles as well. So now you have things lined up, press and hold T to bring up the radio menu and select request tactical support from commander. Upon doing this, a voice will promptly yell at you. This means you now have to open the map to see a blue circle. Right click in that and select accept. Alternatively, you can deny it if it's not in the correct position. Once you've accepted it, someone will yell at you again and it will go yellow. Right click on your lineup marker and select the airstrike. Drag the line through your target as mentioned before and left click and that's it done. This is a great technique to snipe radios or vehicles through a tight angle. This technique can also be used on artillery as well, but because artillery has such a large splash area, you don't need to be as accurate. Don't forget your UAV is up for a total of five minutes, so it's a good idea to mark any enemy vehicles or positions if you see them, so other squads can deal with them appropriately. Now for militia and insurgents, things are a little bit different. Instead of a UAV, you get a handheld drone, and instead of 155mm artillery, you get a heavy mortar barrage. The handheld drone is fantastic for buzzing around, finding infantry, vehicles and emplacements. But what a lot of you may not know is that if you have a sapper in your squad, you can in fact place IEDs onto it. And not just one IED, you can fit up to five of them. This transforms such a simple, innocent bit of kit into a devastating and terrifying weapon. Now it's important to have the sapper in your squad as using local voice ends up coming from the drone itself, so when you need to call in the IED to blow it, he won't be able to hear you. So if they're in your squad, you can use squad comms to relay the information. To have IEDs placed on your drone, you need to be by an active hab or by certain vehicles such as a BMP, Logi trucks or a BRDM scout car. Select the drone itself once the timer is ready and place it. Once you are in control of the drone itself, you need to slowly lower the drone to the floor. Once it is on the ground, the sapper can place IEDs on it, but carefully, as if they walk into the drone itself one time too many, it can actually destroy it. 
Once you have a good amount of IEDs that you wish, simply take off and fly to your target. Now a good technique is to fly physically inside an enemy hub, as if the drone gets destroyed by infantry, the IEDs will still stay in place. So you know, goodbye fob. Another good tactic is to fly up behind an enemy tank and hover at the back of the turret above the engine, sort of like wedging yourself in the turret ring. It is a complete blind spot for the vehicle and if you've got about 4 or 5 IEDs, it is an instant kill. It's also absolutely hilarious to see as well. So now that you've learned the art of IED drones, the next asset available is the Heavy Mortar Barrage. It's basically a smaller version of the 155mm artillery, only you cannot increase the area in which it will fire upon. Now you can call this in via the drone if you have it, using the same technique you would use in a UAV, but in case you don't have a drone available, you can also do this by using your binoculars. Now I quickly want to mention that you can use this bino technique as a regular faction as well, but because the UAVs are so good, it's very rare that you would use this. Now this tactic works effectively up to a thousand meters. You can do it further, but it's a bit more trial and error to get it exactly where you want it. But simply get yourself into an elevated or safe position with a clear line of sight onto your target. Using your observation marker button that you've already keybound, ping the target and immediately press and hold T to select the request tactical support from commander. Check the map to ensure it's where you want it, accept it, and then run to an active fob to call it in. And that's it. That's all command actions for both regular and non-regular forces. Now if you join a game and no one's taken the commander role, at least you can use the assets effectively and people will think you're great for it. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you next time.